lesson we read about Wilbur and Orville Wright building something with their mom. What were they building, Carly Francis? A sled. Excellent. And what was so special about their sled ride, right, Hannah Fisher? They went a lot faster and farther. Excellent job. Thank you. Let's take a look at our chalkboard words. Stand to read the first one, Cherry. Okay, actually, this is going to have a long, long eye. Excellent job. And a glider is an aircraft that flies in the wind. Santa, read the second one. Sarah. Ungainly. Excellent job. And ungainly just means awkward and clumsy. In our reading today, we are going to see how the Wright brothers felt about being the first people ever to fly. How would you feel to be the first person ever to fly? I would be nervous because you wouldn't be sure if it was safe or not. So we're going to see how they felt to be the first person to fly. In your reading today, I'm going to be listening for smoothness. And if you read with smoothness, your smoothness makes me happy, and I'll give you a smile to show it. Open your books to page 55. And stand and begin reading at the flying machine, Karsten. <clears throat> Kitty Hawk hadn't changed much. Lynn Tate was a little older, but no bruiser than he had been on the Wright Brothers' first visit. He helped them build this shed to protect their glider and its engine from the storms that occasionally swept over the sand dunes. Then Will and Orr gave him the job of bringing firewood every morning. They paid him a dollar a day for that. Thank you. Pause right there. What is a glider again, Carly Phelps? Excellent job. Thank you. Continue, Carson. All day long, they worked on their glider and their engine. It was a funny looking thing, and when the men from the life saving station walked over to look at it, they shook their heads. You're really going to make that thing fly? One of them asked Wilbur. Maybe. Maybe, Will said. Thank you. You sound like a great scream, Carson. Do you think the people watching them believed in them, Lauren? No. And why do you say that? Because they said, Do you really think they can make this thing fly? Exactly. Great work. And how do you. Yes, thank you. Continue reading, Jasmine. How long have you been working on this? Another asked. All our lives, Oracle asked. And that was the truth. He could have for a second. So, how dedicated do you think the Wright brothers were to make the glider fly, do he? What was the question? How dedicated do you think they were to making their glider fly, based off of what Jasmine read? Yes, because it says they worked on it all their lives. So great work with that. So boys and girls, when we work on something with diligence and we work hard, that's called perseverance. And we are called to work with perseverance. And we can rely on God's strength. In Philippians 4.13 it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So boys and girls, I hope that you're relying on God's strength to do all that you're doing. And the Wright brothers certainly did, and they persevered. Continue, Jasmine. Their first flying machine. The word airplane wasn't used then. It didn't have wheels. It had skids, sometimes like steep. Something like steep. Will and Oracle. Start over right there and read with more smoothness. It had skids, something like steep. Will and Oracle built two wooden tracks and laid them out on the sand. They would launch their flying machine from this track. They tested the engine again and again. It made a lot of noise and it shook the whole glider. But it was well fastened to the lower wing and it wouldn't fly off. At least they hoped it wouldn't. Thank you, Jeff, you can stop right there. How many times did they test their engine, Lydia? Oh, um, a lot of times. Yes, great work. So let's see if their pers perseverance paid off. Continue, Jeehee. I think we can try it today, Will, and we'll say casually on the morning. All Start over with that sentence, reading with more smoothness. Will said casually on the morning of December 17, 1903. Will probably didn't realize that forever and ever, boys and girls in school would learn the bad thing. December 17, 1903. It's one of the most important days to think you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for being a great student. So, from this paragraph, do you think their glider is going to fly, Jasmine? And why do you say that? Yes, but what is it? Was this an important date in history? Yes. And so
so if something important happens, it gets written down. And so if it got written down, it's important. So their glider must have flown, so we'll see. Thank you, you may have a seat. Continue reading, Taylor. We're as ready as we ever will be, or have said just as casually. Outwardly, they were calm, but they were human, and you can be sure that they were excited inside. They tossed a coin to decide which one would try the machine first, or one. I'm going to fly today, or whispered to herself. I'm going to be the first man in the world to fly. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you for reading with such smoothness. Who is the first brother to fly, Sarah? And how would you feel if you were Orville being the first person to fly? I'd be excited. You'd be excited? I think I would too, but I'd be very nervous. Thank you, and have a seat. Continue reading, Lydia O. There were only five people out near the lonely sand dune to watch the flying machine try to get into the air, and not one of them thought it could do it. One of the five was a 16-year-old boy named Johnny Moore, whose father was a fisherman. They started up the engine, or climbed onto the lower wing. Orville steadied the glider, which was vibrating, vibrating terrifically. Pause right there. Steadied is our vocab word, meaning balanced, not shaking or moving. So when he stepped onto the glider, it was shaking, so he had to steady it. They could continue. You ready, Orb? Wilbur shouted. All set, Orb yelled back. Let her go, Wilbur cried, and Orb released the lever that made the propellers fight into the air. The glider started to move along the track slowly, a bit quicker, and then, just as it reached the end of the track, the front of the glider rose up, the rest followed, and the flying machine was in the air. It rose to ten feet. It was flying. It sped along in the air. Wilbur, usually calm, was trembling with joy. Orville was actually flying. The flying machine went 100 feet, and then it glided down gracefully to the sand. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you for being a great student. Was it quite successful, Karsten? Yes. Thank you. May be seated. And how many feet did their glider fly up, Juhi? Excellent job. So, boys and girls, what an exciting time for the Wright brothers. They had a dream, and they used their perseverance, and now they're beginning to be successful. Continue reading, Lydia. Um, I'm sorry. Continue reading, Hannah. Orville tumbled out of the first machine that had ever really flown. We did it, Will, he said, his voice shaky. We can fly, Wilbur said with awe. We can fly. How long was I up, Ward asked. Twenty seconds, Will said. Now let me try it. Wilbur flew 175 feet and let the machine come down. Orville tried it again and came down after about 15 seconds. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you for reading with great smoothness. How many feet was the second flight, Carly Phelps? Great work with that. Continue reading, Charity. Will, see how far you can fly it, Orville suggested as the rover took his position to try again. Will nodded. Once again, the flying machine was launched. It rose about 20 feet and the rover leveled it off. Looking down, he saw the same wind flying past him. The flying machine kept on and on. This was a real flight. Two startled seagulls flew along the ice cream machine. Pause right there. Shrilly is one of our vocab words, meaning high pitched, piercing sound. So maybe that's why. He noticed the birds because they had a shrilly sound. Continue. What new kind of bird was this? When Wilbur had flown 800 feet of draft of down air towards the flying machine room, you were up there 50 Thank you, seconds. Cherry. Thank you for reading with such accuracy. What type of bird did Wilbur see in the air, Taylor? Seagull. Yes. And why do you think they were screaming shrilly at, at him in the sky? Because they had never seen one. Thank you. They had never seen an aircraft in the sky before, so the birds were probably confused. Continue reading, Sarah. You were up there 59 seconds, or shouted as Wilbur climbed down to the lower wing. Next time, we'll stay up 59 minutes, Wilbur said with a laugh. Let's send a telegram to Father, or said. The foreman and the 16 year old boy who had watched the first flight of an airplane came running up to shake hands with the two brothers. Even now, they could hardly believe their eyes. They had seen a heavy, ungainly looking glider with a heavy engine actually rise from the ground and fly. No one else in history had ever seen anything like this before. Wilbur and Orville hurried to send a telegram to their father, Andy Kate. Back home, the bishop and his daughter read the telegram with shining eyes. They ran to the shop to tell Charlie Taylor about it. He wasn't a bit excited. He knew they'd do it all along, he said calmly. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for reading with great smoothness. What does ungainly mean again, Carly Phelps? Awkward. Great work. And so if the glider was ungainly in appearance, 
Do you think that you would have believed something like that could have formed Carson? Great work. Thank you. Continue reading, Charity. A week later, Wilbur and Warble came home. There was no glass to dance to meet them. There were no huge paper in at the station. Alicia Bright and Kate were the only ones to open them. Pause right there. Read it with a little more volume. Um, there were no newspaper men at the station. Bishop Wright and Kate were the only ones to welcome them. We flew Kate was the company. They don't believe that Kate did it. Really. Who doesn't believe it? We'll ask. The newspapers were people, cool, even the neighbors Kate said crazy. First they think we're crazy, we'll say. Now they think we're lying. Think you can pause right there. Why do you think that people did not believe their achievement, Elsa? Because no one could ever know something like that before. Yes, great job. Boys and girls, this makes me think about Noah and the first time that it rained. God gave Noah a commandment and said to build an ark because it was going to rain. But the people thought he was crazy because they had never seen rain before. But Noah was doing exactly what he was supposed to be doing, so he did it anyway. And the Wright brothers did something that they believed that they should be doing. God gave them dreams, and they did it. But the people thought he was crazy. But he knew what he was doing and that he was doing what was right. And boys and girls, it doesn't matter what other people think. It matters what God thinks of you and that if you're doing what's right and you're doing what matters. And just remember to rely on God's strength to do what is right. Continue reading Carly Francis. Don't worry, boys, the father said. I once told, I once told you that God had big plans for you too. I was right. No one can interfere with his plan. He gave you something special that allowed you to be the first two men in his let people laugh. We'll show them or we said grimly. Thank you. You may have a seat. Let's go ahead and go back and read on page 58, starting at, you were up there 59 seconds, Carson. You were up there 59 seconds, Laura shouted, as we climbed down to the lower wing. Next time, we'll stay up for 59 minutes, Laura said with a laugh. Let's send a telegram to Father Clark said. The poor man and the 16-year-old boy who had watched the first flight of the airplane came riding up to shake hands with the two brothers. Even now, they could hardly believe their eyes. They had seen a heavy, ungainly looking glider with a heavy engine actually rise from the ground and fly. No one else in history had ever seen anything like this before. Wilbur and Oliver, uh, Oliver hurried to send a telegram to their father and Kate. Back home, the bishop and his daughter read the telegram with shiny eyes. Thank you, Stepford. Right Continue reading, Sarah. Stepford, so they read with more volume. They ran to the shop to tell Charlie Taylor about it. He wasn't a bit excited. We knew they'd do it all along, he said calmly. A week later, Wilbur and Orville came home. There was no brass band to meet them. There were no newspaper men at the station. Bishop Wright and Kate were the only ones to welcome them. Thank you, Sarah. You can stop right there. So boys and girls, God had big plans for the Wright brothers, and God has put big plans in your hearts. And if you depend on God's strength in Philippians 4.13, you can achieve great big dreams like the Wright brothers did. So what character trait helped the Wright brothers to build their glider to make it successful, Elsa? Perseverance. Excellent job remembering. And who encouraged them in the end of our story, Lydia O? Their father. Excellent job. Does your dad encourage you? Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful reading with smoothness today. And throughout your day, remember that you can rely on God's strength in all that you do. In our next lesson, you're going to learn about the amazing man, Sergeant York, and the character trait and the strategy that he used that was key in World War I. Prepare for science.